Fight Underground fans, here we are. Whoa, 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 hold up. You ain't crocking, you ain't rocking, baby. Sit down, sir. Hey, relax, man. Yeah, sit down. The unique stylings of Sam Beal and the uh, juggernaut himself, John Roden. Opening round matchup in area two. We have two young guns in the wrestling business looking to use this platform to establish themselves. I'm going to go to John Roden first. John, you've had a lot of hype coming in with the Fight Council. A lot of people are talking about John Roden. A lot of people are talking about the Juggernaut. Mm -hmm. Let our fans know just who is John Roden. I mean, my track record is well proven. I have a reputation amongst the area. I've won championships in almost every company that I've went to. I'm sure you know that. I'm sure you've watched me. I've, Like I said, I'm the young veteran and I'm coming into this to make a point that I'm still on top. And if I put my mind to it, I need to stay on top. That is the goal. That's a solid point. And uh, Sam, if you can keep your mental faculties composed, I'm going to allow you to enlighten the Pittsburgh fans who may be unfamiliar just who is Sam Beal. First off, Chuck, my name is the natural Sam Beal. I come a ran Crocs, cracking open bush lattes, and rocking the absolute, uh, most amazing mullet that you've ever seen. And that is a fact. Jack. You've definitely been cracking some cans open, haven't you? I can tell. Uh, no. John Roden, tell me your strategy to deal with uh, this unique individual over here. Uh, Sam, I've heard about you. I haven't really seen you in a while, so there's a surprise there with everything you're doing. Uh, I don't have a lot of footage on you to watch, honestly. I haven't seen you in this area, but, I mean, whatever. You bring the best fight you can, man. That's all I'm asking. If I, if, listen. I asked for the rev when I first came here, but if this is what I got to do, if I got to take down the young upstart, then so be it. That's exactly what's going to happen. I'm sorry. Your time will come, but not while I'm here. Sam, IndieWrestling.us has a ton of footage of this man. So obviously you've studied and you've come up with this nice wardrobe. Tell us how you're going to approach John Roden. Well, you know, first off, I hear about this guy named The Juggernaut. And we all know that juggernauts are not real. I had to log on to a video game, play MW2, destroy a couple of those things. And then I had to go and sit down and watch a John Roden match. You know, John, you're really solid at the fundamentals. But to me, the fundamentals are just a crutch for the talentless. I come with all that pizzazz and all that noise. Baby! All right, you know. Do you um, dress yourself? Uh, every day of my life. All right, he just, he all just didn't got. he just didn't have the lights on you, when he did you're it. You're jealous. You're jealous because I can go one shot on it. Don't do that. All Look right, that. before you get us kicked off the internet, hey, everybody, opening round matchup, area two, John Roden, Sam Beal. Uh, be back yeah, here on Facebook, all our social media outlets. It's coming up. You look like a candy cane. You're just jealous that I'm sweet. And Joe Dirt. Not. Look at this right. thing. You want to see it too? All right, bye. Well, hello, friends. I'm your pal in the mainstream media. And, and I'm the Riz. And, and you know, it. Riz, it takes years of strenuous, dedicated training before you're worthy to step inside a professional wrestling ring. But it takes even more time to develop complex, highly astute opinions about professional wrestling. Am I right? That is correct. Yes. And you know where we can find that? Yes. On the wrestling name. That's right. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestlingmayhemshow. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios here in Pittsburgh, PA. Alone, of course, physically. Uh, actually, that's not true. Producer Missy's hanging out in the back, but uh, we're, we're, we're just quarantined together, so it's all good. Uh, but with us, um, and, and actually the first time I think I've had this this, this gentleman remotely, because every time this, he's, he's insisted on being on in the studio 
or in person the few times that we've uh, interviewed him on this show in Wrestling Mayhem show uh, back with us uh, because he's got a project that I hope you guys are going to check out. I'm, I'm carving out some time to make sure I watch this when this releases here in a day. Magnum CK on the line with us. How you doing, man? Uh, I'm doing well considering all the circumstances, but you know the main reason I like to come to your studio is not just for the live energy, but because uh, first-time guests always get that tote bag full of uh, souvenirs, and I keep trying to act like I never got one before, so I see how many I can get. Yeah, 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 we have that problem. Yeah, it involves uh, <laughs> uh, uh, coupons for the taco stand, uh, Slice on Broadway, and, uh, and a me bobblehead, apparently. Uh, yeah, so, the, yeah, the the sorg the sorgatron media bathrobe is my personal favorite. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, we we were just talking about beforehand. We I think we talked with you shortly before your retirement. So what have you been doing with your non wrestling time? Uh, I've just been uh, staring at the wall. And okay. Sometimes, sometimes the ceiling. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, up until you know this quarantine thing really grounded i mean everybody but i really uh it took it was a wild adjustment because I, I i'm pretty much non-stop i think after leaving active wrestling um i kind of overcorrected, and i think my therapist would probably agree that i probably overdid it <laughs> with a bunch of other things mm -hmm. and uh I, by the end of it you know three or four months after i left wrestling I had like four jobs and like was doing all these shows and stuff. So this quarantine has been a good reset button because I'm like, oh yeah, this is I, this is my house. I can unpack. We've only lived here for like two years. <laughs> oh, very very familiar with that. Uh, it, it is actually kind of funny because I, I just watched the uh, Edge documentary that WWE just put out, and it sounds oh, it sounds like the, have you have you watched that yet? Yeah, I loved it. I yeah. Uh, it, it sounds like the same thing because he just kind of like said, OK, what's the next thing and rolled into and, and very because I know you have you know the bug and you're very involved in, in acting uh, as well. So it, that had been re very relatable for you. Well, yeah, absolutely. And, and one thing that made me laugh about that documentary was um, when Edge, I think he did an interview like two or three weeks or whatever it was after he retired and he was talking about doing some auditions and he's like, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not an actor, you know, I'm not going to go out and be an actor and do all these things. And then the next knew he's in like every show and booking all these jobs. And I laughed because I can relate to that. Cause it's like, yeah, you know, I'm going to take some time. And then a, a week later, I'm like overcommitted and I'm late for appointments and I'm running behind for meetings because <laughs> I've <laughs> done too much. Um, but you know, it's, it's a good point though, too, because even like this documentary, like you said, is coming out tomorrow. Um, I was, I was, we were taking our dogs, my wife and I were taking our dogs on a walk, uh, which is basically all we get to do now. And, uh, and I was telling her, I, she was like, man, tomorrow's your birthday and the movie's coming out. Like, are you excited? And I was like, I forgot about it. Like, I know I've been editing it, working on it, promoting it, doing all that stuff. But I was like, oh yeah, because in my mind it's done and it's, it's out there now. And what now? What's next? Mm -hmm. And I can relate to that feeling. So last time we had you on, because I, I, I had discovered Marking Out, uh, your first documentary, and then later connecting the dots after Minium League. Oh, wait, that's you. <laughs> and oh, wait, your friend is that T-shirt guy in that. Yeah. So so from what I understand, what, this was supposed to be kind of a, 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 a spiritual or direct sequel to, to Marking Out. I, I, I believe early discussion, this was kind of referred to as a Marking Out too. That was the plan. And, you know, you, you hit on something else, which is I have this strange like chameleon like person like uh, physical personality where if i grow a beard people are like oh i didn't even recognize you or if like a couple years go by and i've dropped 20 pounds or something i look like a different guy so that happens a lot where people have seen mm -hmm. marking out and then they're like it took me like three years to realize that you were that guy yeah <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so this movie we were you know mike rhodes and i made we made that movie and we made uh magnum's opus but uh, originally, it was supposed to be uh, Marking Out 2 with the tentative tagline or the uh, subtitle of uh, Magnum's Opus, just because we thought it was a, a neat little title. And I was just going to be a part of it, like a small part of it, really. I mean, it was going to be like, hey, remember we did this fun, quirky documentary about wrestling? Well, Chris went back to wrestling, and hey, let's look at him, and he's an AIW tag champion now. That's fun. And then we were going to follow all kinds of other people, and I was just going to be like a small part. And then I got really popular in Cleveland, and then I, the whole injury thing happened. 
And it was Mike who was actually like, you know, we're making a different movie now, <laughs> you know, because all this stuff just happened out of nowhere. And um, we have so much footage from other things that just didn't really fit into this project anymore that we could easily use, you know, to release online in the future or for another project altogether. So we just mm-hmm. had to roll with it. We had to, we had to yes and the situation. <laughs> <laughs> if you're on visuals with us, that was a little bit of images from the Marking Out uh, trailer, which actually is available if you have Amazon Prime. And that's where I discovered it, too, because it was one of those things I found one night. And then I'm like messaging Joe Dabrowski. I'm like, do you realize you're on this documentary? <laughs> you know, things like that. Like it's commentary from, I believe, the remix shows that are a part of that. Uh, you know, things like that. It's just kind of like a weird discovery. You know, you, you know seeing like people you work with in other projects uh, kind of thing happening there. Uh, so that is freely available. If you guys can go check that out there. And I'm sure on out- other outlets as well. Right. Uh, marking out, yeah, yes. it's, uh, marking out is uh, we have uh, physical media and it's on Amazon Prime. Yeah, mm-hmm. excellent. Uh, so tell so tell me so tell me about that transition a little bit into you know this being more of what it's become for for this documentary. It was a I don't know it was a weird time because a lot was happening. Um, you'll find out a lot more detail in the documentary, but you know, I was injured. I had a back injury for, for a year, almost a a little over a year actually. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I was just in pain for a long time and it kept getting worse and worse, but we just kept trucking along. I was still acting and directing. I was still doing, you know, uh, finishing another degree that I was working on and, wrestling every weekend. I was wrestling in, you know, New Jersey, Toronto, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, like all, all over the place all the time. Um, and we're just also working on this documentary and it just kind of all changed in about a week's time. It was like, Oh, I have this major thing. And then, you know, it was like, well, what do we do? And so we just kept kind of filming, kept shooting what we could shoot. And, um, luckily we did cause we ended up with a ton of footage, but it was a hard decision because you know, we had this whole idea for a movie and it kind of went another direction. Um, I always say, and, and I'm sure I heard this somewhere else because I, I don't remember where if I did, but a documentary is essentially a movie that you write after you filmed it, right? <laughs> after you shot it. <laughs> so you, you, you have a plan and you think, okay, here's the story or here's what we think the story might be. Then you shoot it all. And then you're like, well, that didn't work, but we have all this. Okay, let's put it together. So it just kind of ended up being, you have to really roll with it to mm-hmm. be a, doc, in my opinion, to be a documentary filmmaker. Uh, and, and I don't know that I'll make a documentary again for a very long time, just because uh, it's it's a different animal. It's a different beast. It's much mm-hmm. more difficult, I feel like, because it's a wild medium. You don't have control. Like there are some sections of this documentary where, you know, you're at wrestling shows and stuff and there's not much you can do about the sound. You know, you can only control oh, yeah. so much of the sound. So that drives me as a sound person. I'm a, I'm a radio and sound person. It drives me crazy. And I can't tell you how many dozens of hours I spent trying to get it all perfect. And it was just like, you have to be like, what that scene is, what it is. We're at a wrestling show. I don't, you know, <laughs> we're going to throw some titles in there and, and just subtitles yeah. in there and just move ahead. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Excellent. So, so, and this is, and it's kind of interesting because, you know, between, you know, the original marking out was kind of you, if I recall, like rediscovering kind of wrestling, right? And now this is kind of like puts, I don't want to say a bookend on that, but it kind of shows like the beginning and and end of that, at least section of your career, right? Yeah, that's a good way to put it, actually. So we had a question that we put forward uh, in marking out, which was kind of like, why do we all like this wrestling thing? And mm-hmm. then it kind of went into, well, why does anyone like anything, you know, like, like uh, that you're not supposed to like anymore, like comic books or whatever, which I also happen to like, but we went to comic book conventions and, or, or cons or whatever they're called now. And just talked to people who were giant fans of things and just got to the bottom of, or tried to get to the bottom of uh, the kind of rhetorical question of like, why do you still watch? Why mm-hmm. do you still like this? And, uh, it was a really fun process. I think we learned a lot about just ourselves. Um, and it's funny cause like 20, 25 minutes into that documentary, I just out of nowhere, I'm like, Oh yeah, well I used to be a wrestler. And it's kind of like, what this guy did, <laughs> he was a wrestler. <laughs> like and I never thought that that would be a weird kind of like brick thrown into the middle of everything. Uh, until other people pointed it out that they were like, we couldn't understand why you didn't bring that up sooner. And it was going to all those Chikara shows 
uh, all over PA and um, just getting back in the locker room and just being around, you know, uh, uh, the roar of the grease paint and the smell of the crowd. <laughs> that kind of made me think like, man, you know, that kind of lit that fire. And I, and I talk about it in this new documentary a lot extensively. My wife talks about it where I just kept talking about wrestling and she was like, well, why don't you just go try it again? And, and, and I didn't, I was like, yeah, but it's, you know, even though we just made this documentary that pretty much ended on the note of like, Hey, it's okay to like wrestling. It's okay to like comics. You know, when I would say, I, I you know, I, I really miss wrestling and, and she'd be like, well, go do it. I would still be like, yeah, but come on. Like I'm an adult now. I'm like, I'm almost 30. Like it's wrestling. And she's like, so, well, you know, why not? And I didn't have a good reason. She's like, it's just like theater. And I'm like, what? Cause I a thought, and maybe this is just like, because maybe wrestling fans and even some wrestlers have like a low self-esteem <laughs> problem. I thought, well, you shouldn't be proud to be a wrestler. And, and, and when I wrestled originally, like in 2004 to about 2009, I kind of hid it from a lot of people. I didn't, mm -hmm. that's why I wrestled under, I, I didn't use my real name, you know, and stuff like that. I thought like, yeah, it's not something like, I don't want to be embarrassed or have people ask me like, cause you always get the questions like, are you a pro wrestler? Oh, do you know the rock? Do you guys really use ketchup for blood? You know, like, so like that. and uh, which yes and yes, of course. Um, <laughs> but she kind of because she's not a, my wife's not a wrestling fan at all, and she was like, I don't think any less of someone if they're a pro wrestler. And it kind of made me realize, like, oh, that's all in my head. I, I built that up in my head. That's not a real thing. Mm -hmm. And I just went back and did it. <laughs> and, and to great effect, I mean, I, I you know, definitely one of the, one of the most uh, creative and prolific I, I, I had seen around. It was always kind of like, what, you know, what's Magnum done lately? Uh, yeah, what the, do you do now? Yeah, to the point. Yeah, it was like, <laughs> what, what the heck is Magnum doing in Cleveland with Papa Shango right now? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you that know. was great because that night was crazy. Mm -hmm. Because uh, it was February or March of 2018, John Thorne had pneumonia. You know, it was after WrestleMania, so mm -hmm. it must have been April. John Thorne had pneumonia, the promoter, and was like in the hospital and like hooked up to a ventilator or something. So I'm like visiting him before the show, and everything's up in the air, and it's just chaos, and we're worried about John. And I actually wasn't booked on a match that night, which was weird because, you know, usually I had a match or something, but the card was stacked. And so I show up, and I think I'm just doing a run-in. They're like, we really want you to do a segment with Papa Shango. <laughs> so I was like, okay, all right. So on my way into the building, I stopped and bought this black um, uh, food coloring and a jar of molasses. Because I thought, because <laughs> they said, you're doing a segment with Papa Shango. And so I thought, well, goddamn, pal. Got to get that voodoo ooze, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> And so I'm like, so I try some of the molasses in the parking lot, and it is disgusting. And I'm like trying to put it in this little balloon. I'm like, if I just pop it in, like, because I saw that that's how Muda and some of those guys did the uh, their uh, mist. They mm -hmm. would either put it in a capsule or sometimes a, a condom, of all things. Mm -hmm. And they pop it in their mouth, you know. And uh, I wasn't going to use a condom. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that purchase. Black dye, molasses, and condoms. <laughs> it's just a Saturday night in Cleveland. Just don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, in Cleveland, right. <laughs> It'd be suspicious if you didn't add condoms to your weird order. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I get out of my car and I grab the bag, the shopping bag. The jar of molasses falls out of the bag and shatters on the ground. And I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I can't get the voodoo ooze. This whole thing is ruined. And when I got to the back, Frankie Flynn was like, hey, I found these black uh, blood capsules. I only got three of them. You think we could use them? And I was like, yes, give me one of them. And uh, Papa Shango was the coolest guy. So, like, he, he did the first half of the show as the Godfather. Mm -hmm. I don't want to smarten anybody up. I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but it's the same guy. And uh, uh, so at intermission, I'm supposed to find Papa Shango and talk out our segment. I'm like, oh, this is cool. Like, I'm kind of, I'm not nervous, but I'm like giddy because I'm like, oh my God. Like, first of all, I love wrestling and I love to wrestle. But if you have a night off where you're just doing a segment, you're never more relaxed because it's like, I don't have to worry about remembering anything. Like, I can just go do a promo. Like, oh, so I'm having a great night. And so I'm like, all right, well, where's Papa Shango? Like, we think he went to the bathroom to do his makeup. So I walk in and he's standing in front of the mirror and he's just putting on the, the, the you know, the classic Papa Shango white makeup. And it's like one of those things where he sees me, I see him, and it's like I don't know what to do because I'm like 
1992 again in my mind. So I'm like, hey, Papa Shango. <laughs> and he's like, hey, man, how's it going? I'm like, are you ready to talk out our segment? And I'm like, I can't believe this is happening. You know, and then he's just like, yeah, whatever you want to do. Uh, he's a super nice guy. And he's like, I'll say, you know, the leg day. And then you just act like, you know, you got voodooed. And that was it. I was like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Amazing. And I got all this international like press, like and I got like articles written about me because of it. Like it was it was wild. It was fun. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I know you were doing a game show thing uh uh here in the area for the rise with Lewis Nerd. We we're actually just talking about it briefly because he I I don't know if you know, he just uh uh what uh lost a loser leaves a rise match and he's heading out to Indiana. Uh so and you were a big part of that uh going on there. And I think I think one of the fans got involved, Bradley, uh for a moment. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, he tried to win the game. He tried and failed. But uh, you know, so I had all these ideas. Yeah. Uh, my whole thing is always to try to go a, a different direction from everybody else, and sometimes that's good, and sometimes that's bad. But I've always liked seventies game shows, and I was like, well, how funny would it be just to have this game show wheel and turn it into a whole thing? And uh, uh, really, where the idea came from was a guy, one of the maintenance guys where my wife works, used to come to some of the local wrestling shows, and he made a big like. A custom game show wheel for like something they have it where, where he works and he just made me one for free and he's like you know and so we just made the whole thing and i was like why not no one's doing a game show wheel that i know of and it was fun i mean i you know it ended up being pretty cumbersome to carry around but uh and you know a few months after that is i wasn't uh you know wrestling but uh i still have it i just moved it around uh, in my basement and it's still here and and that's the whole thing is just try to do something to be different. And I know it annoyed a lot of people, like not just in the crowd, but like all my weird ideas until, until people trust you. And like, and this happened at AIW, I was very timid at the beginning. And then I started to get more confident and started to believe in myself a little more. And then I would throw out my wild ideas. And at first people were like, Oh man, I don't know. But then once they see that you're over and that it's getting over, then you can pitch anything and get away with it. And sometimes that's even more trouble. <laughs> 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 that's awesome so so tell me about you know through this process you know uh, documentary filmmaking i've done a little bit myself it's a lot of kind of pouring over a lot of material and kind of and, and and it seems like sometimes rediscovering what you have with it yeah. well as you went back over and started to construct this thing was, was there any threads to this uh you know as you don't want to spoil uh that you found in this uh, that, that really kind of surprised you yeah well i mean first of all just gathering all the footage which you were very gracious and you know giving me some of the footage of, of myself and uh just gathering it and then going through it and cataloging it after i collected it i mean mm. that was probably 40 or 50 hours just right there i mean mm. just getting everything together and i think um just of wrestling footage i ended up with about 200 and 250 gigabyte worth of just just wrestling stuff from the past you know 15 years or whatever and uh and that's what I could find. And then uh, we shot, uh, just to use the same measurement, it was about the same that we shot. So about 500 gigabytes of footage that I'm trying to go through and handle and log. And I have big spreadsheets <laughs> full of like <laughs> the weirdest tags because it'll say the match, the date, the file name, and then have time codes. Like, uh, you know, like uh, two hours and 17 minutes, you know, voodooed by Papa Shango. And then like the next show is like, you know, at one hour, 59 minutes, thrown by my nipples by Swoggle. <laughs> 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 like, so, like, someday when I'm gone and someone's going through my stuff, they're going to be like, this guy's like an insane person. <laughs> like, what are all these these Excel spreadsheets for? <laughs> um, so, I got to do something pretty cool, which is not only collect all of my uh, wrestling footage, but kind of watch it objectively because we're always our own worst critics, or I think if you want to be good at stuff, you're probably your, your own worst critic. Um, so just under, under normal circumstances, I would never really watch my own matches. Now, I, I would make myself from time to time just to see what something looked like, to see, like, oh, that was terrible, don't do that again, or how can I make that better? But uh, I never really enjoy watching myself. So I, want, I tried to watch myself from a filmmaker's perspective, and I really found myself appreciating... Uh, some of the stuff I did a lot more instead of being like, oh, I could have done more or what was that or that was rushed or geez, what was I thinking? It was more like, oh, that's, I forgot about that. That's actually pretty clever. And I can look at it from an outsider's perspective. But it's weird. I, and I was talking about this the other day. 
it's like it changed my memory a little bit because like my last match uh, at AIW was this amazing night, five, 600 fans, you know, standing ovations, just a surreal night. And my whole final entrance was this crazy memory I have where I just tried to stop and soak it all in, but it was like overwhelming, but I've watched the footage so much that when I think back to try to remember that, I just see the footage, which is maybe good, maybe bad, but I, I, I mean, it's more vivid now but I feel like a lot of my memories of stuff have been replaced with, you know, uh, file footage. Uh, but uh, at least I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> it. It kind of adds a new layer on that memory, right? Yeah. Well, you know, and it's funny because this project gave me great anxiety for a lot of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, not the least of which I, I always have a, I have a catastrophizing anxiety, which is when I start to get nervous about something, I start rolling through worst case scenarios all the time and i have a set obsessive compulsive disorder so those worst case scenarios keep going and going and going and going until i either talk myself out of it or now i have a new tactic that really works for me which is write it down write it down get it out of your brain and it really i have journals that i carry with me and if i find myself getting in a thought loop write it down sometimes i'll write it a few times and that's the ocd a little bit mm -hmm. but then i get it out and i'm like there it is it's not in here anymore it's down great um, and I do the same if I have an idea for something. Instead of thinking about it too much and losing it, I'll write it down, which is always the best when you go to bed. Because if you lay in bed, you'll have the best ideas right before you fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have a notepad or your phone around. So then you spend 20 minutes trying to talk yourself out of it. Like, it's not that good of an idea. Like, nah, <laughs> you don't have to get up and go get your notebook. That's not that funny. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so I had this anxiety about this project because I thought, well, it's not going to get done. Or it's not going to come together, you know, and I, and I was talking to my therapist about it and she was like, well, it's because not only obviously this is important to you and you love wrestling more than probably almost anything. I mean, theater and wrestling as far as activities are like my life, my whole life for the last, you know, wrestling has been a part of my life since I was zero years old and I've been in theater for 18 years. Mm -hmm. So performing is everything to me. And um, she was like, you're wound up about this movie because this is your legacy project and you don't, you don't realize that this is your legacy. You're trying to put together what you did into a nice little package and just have it kind of out there in the archives of the world forever. And you're taking it seriously. And that's when it all kind of snapped into focus. And I was like, that's right. Okay. I need to look at this from a third person's perspective and be like, I'm chronicling this guy. What did he do? How did he do it? What's important? Cut this, cut this, cut this, you know, piece it together. And that helped, that streamlined the whole project. Excellent, excellent. So Magnum's Opus, it is going to be released uh, tomorrow. We're talking about April 9th here. Uh, your birthday, happy pre-birthday. <laughs> so uh, tell people, how can people um, um, catch this thing? Well, uh, it'll be on YouTube at noon, mm -hmm. um, and it will be on Amazon Prime. Now, Amazon Prime's having some delays mm -hmm. uh, with some of their titles because of, uh, you know, short staffing issues with COVID-19 and everything. So um, it's still scheduled to be up tomorrow on Amazon Prime. It might get delayed a couple of days. That's entirely possible. But either way, it will be on YouTube uh, uh, tomorrow um, uh, at noon on the dot. It'll pop right up. Nice, nice. Go check that out. Um, and uh, anything else? Anything else going on? You need a plug, or uh, uh, just uh, this is probably just an all-encompassing thing for you right now. <laughs> yeah, it is. It doesn't. It, I mean, it, it it was a big project, uh, and it's a couple of years in the making. Um, the best, if if you if you have trouble finding it or whatever, you know, my Twitter is probably the best place to find the links mm -hmm. um, at the magnum ck but um when you if you find it on youtube i'd love it if people subscribe because we have a lot of more videos especially now that we're all stuck at home uh we have some videos coming out not only with some of the extra footage that we have and i shouldn't even say extra footage like oh this wasn't good enough for the film it's just like listen we can't make a four-hour movie <laughs> like it's not it's not the godfather <laughs> epic nobody cares that much right so um i'll be releasing that periodically so if you hop on youtube uh, just go ahead and subscribe and you'll, you'll get some of that stuff because we have some great stuff in the movie with Swoggle and RJ City and uh, tons of – Eric Ryan pops up in it. And tons of people pop up in it from the indie scene that you recognize. There's footage from not only AIW and Remix Pro Wrestling but IWC up your way. Uh, lots of footage there. My mm -hmm. my – a nine second spectacular with Shane in your face. <laughs> <makes the cut. laughs> I, and I was, I think I was told by the promoter that was the match where he was sold on you. 
<laughs> well, yeah, because so the before the show, uh, the ring broke. Yes. And so they're running late, and Shane and I were first match, and we had like eight to ten curtain to curtain, right? Mm-hmm. But the show starts like fifty minutes late or an hour late, and they're like, "Listen, we can give you three minutes." And I could tell Plummer was so heartbroken because he knows that you know, that no one wants to go up to a wrestler and say, "Sorry, you have three minutes curtain to curtain." And he's like, "Could you maybe do a jump start and just get your stuff in in three? And I was like, "I have a better idea." What if I do my whole big dumb entrance, big long minute and a half, two minute entrance, get in the ring, take my time, turn around, bell rings, bang, knee to the face, one, two, three, flash, UFC finish, sail to the back, fall around, whatever. And he was like, oh, and I think he was trying to protect me. He's like, that's going to, I don't know if it's going to work for you, man. Like, that's going to look, make you look bad. And whatever. I was like, no, no, trust me, trust me. I will not look bad. <laughs> and then I crawled to the back and, and Plummer was the first person to come up to me. He was like, you were right. That was brilliant. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, I, that, that's always great to hear. It's better mm-hmm. than the alternative. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And of course, Shane in your face, now known as the violent gentleman, uh, by, for anybody looking for him, the, 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 look that up. So. Uh, awesome, well, Magnum. Always a great to have a have a conversation with you. Oh, my pleasure. Anytime. We don't have to talk about me. Uh, we can talk about Sid Vicious or anything. <laughs> anything else? <laughs> well, we've been doing these. We've we'll, we'll, been doing these. Uh, these, these calls where it's just we're catching up with people to see how they're coping for this show. So you're actually a rare interview that we're doing during this time period. So uh, I'll I'll let you know one of the times. Maybe you can pop in if you're not if you're not busy. Yeah, and just not to spoil it, but I've been coping by watching Sid Vicious matches. So. Perfect, perfect. Because yeah, it could be worse. <laughs> hey, there's plenty of back catalog to catch up on, right? Or revisit, or whatever the case may be. Or if that's not your case, hey, Total Bell has just started again. So there you go. You know, <laughs> Brazoodle, Brazoodle. <laughs> Thank you so much, the Magnum CK on the Twitter. Go, I, I, I I'm re-remembering to put the the in front of it because I haven't tagged one of his matches in so long. But uh, go check it out. Check out the documentary. Like I said, I've carved out some time tomorrow, so I can go check it out myself uh, as soon as it drops there on YouTube. And uh, and uh, please uh, support support indie wrestling in this time. Uh, we have a page over at indiewrestling.us with uh, 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 several wrestlers and uh, tagging their pa- their Patreon pages, their pro wrestling tees, whatever the case may be. Uh, a lot of the friends of the network, and we're gonna go double check. I'm not sure if it's on there yet, but Magnum CKs will be on there here uh, by the end of the day here. So um, thank you so much, and uh, please support them. Please. Support for independent filmmaking as well. We'll see you guys next time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. The world of pro wrestling, it's bigger than ever. So how can you possibly keep up with everything that's happening? Just pro wrestling news. Don't fear falling behind. Give us just five minutes every morning and we'll catch you up on the biggest news in the world of pro wrestling. No filler, no rumors, no spoilers, no pop-ups. Just pro wrestling news. Subscribe on your favorite podcast app or tell your smart speaker to play the Just Pro Wrestling News podcast. Find out more. Go to JustProWrestlingNews.com.
How about both? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. You want to go? Let's go. Let's play. Oh, 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 my hair is too sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
John Roden, you just won the first match in round one. You're advancing on to round two. You're now one and zero here in Fight Underground. How does that make you feel? It feels great to be able to say what you mean to say and come in and back it up because there's people that have been doubting me since I started in the Pittsburgh indie scene. Guys like Sam Beal, they're a hell of a competitor, but they, they're just like I was when I first started, naive. It is my time. I'm no longer playing games, and I will move on to win Area 2. Mark my words. John Roden, congratulations again on your win. Sam Beal, you were taking it to John Roden here today. You Do took. That. Don't bring it up. I'm a little bit of a sensitive guy. I don't like to talk about the things that I hate because I hate losing, and I hate people who disrespect Nickelback. And I feel like you're going to bring up one of those two, and I'm not here for it, all right? You know what? I came here and I made a statement. The natural is here to stay. I'm a big, bad mamma jamma, and I'm going to smell bush light and victory. You best believe that. You said you were going to come in to fight underground and you were going to basically dominate. From what I've seen, you were holding up your end of the bargain. Where are you going from here? I just got to keep backing up everything that I've been saying. I, I, for the longest time, I didn't. I was kind of insecure about what I've done and what I've accomplished. But I decided when I came to fight underground, I was going to say what I am, what I've accomplished, and then back it up. And that's exactly what I'm going to continue to do. RPW, do you have a second question? Impressive. Very, very impressive. My, Thank uh, you. my question for you today is the, the strategy <clears throat> that Dash Bennett passed down his finishing move to you. Mm -hmm. Who came up with that? Uh, that was an idea from Dash. Uh, I think a lot of people were concerned about maybe how long, how much experience I've had, and maybe that's weighed some of the fight counts away from me. Like, I couldn't teach me anything. And, and Dash took it upon himself to come up with that idea, and it, was, it actually worked out. So kudos to him for that. Congratulations. Thank you. Dean, do you have a final question? John, you and I go way back. I know what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So what's next? 
I think you know what's next. <laughs> I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. Like I said, it's, it's the message is plain and simple. I need to prove myself as the top competitor in the Pittsburgh indie scene and all across independent professional wrestling. But it's going to start here. I have yet to make, be, make myself the man around here. You know, I've always just seemed to come short. I'll get a hint at the top of the mountain, and then I fall off. It's going to change, and it's going to change right here. All right, John, is there anything you'd like to add? Thank you, guys. Thank you for the compliments. It's, it's going to keep rolling, and we're going we're gonna to impress. Hang in there. And tonight's aftermath uh, with... It, it, psst, excuse me, Ms. Lady. Can you please inform these jabronskis that if they bring up anything to do with the L word and me from last night, they're going to get one right in the kiss. All right? Tell them. Go ahead. It's kind of their job to ask you about your loss. Ah! Uh, what? Do not bring that up. I'm a little bit of a sensitive guy, and I do not want to show the people that side of me. All right? Fight so. after Paul Atlas, would you like to start? Sure, most definitely after that comment, son. Yeah. Dean that. Radford brought you in and touted you as his next big thing, and then you go and lose to John Roden. <laughs> what are you going to do to prove yourself to this fight council? I told you, do not bring that up. Yeah, well, I kind of make the rules around here, kid. Okay. <laughs> what am I going to do? I'm going to come back and prove that I am the next big thing because look at me. I look the part. I am the part, baby. You believe that. Dash Bennett, would you like to ask the next question? Yeah, so I think you had a very impressive uh, outing against John Roden. Obviously, he was the better man tonight. But my question is, do you think that you would have performed better had you not had such a stupid idiot of a council leader in Dean Radford? First off, that doesn't add up because he isn't the better man. He caught me. He got lucky. He got whatever. Dean Bradford is a great human being, and he chose this excellent, glorious mullet to come in here and reign superior over the fight underground. And that is exactly what I plan to do. And that is a fact, Jack. RPW? It was a very impressive loss that you had tonight. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, so uh, what was your strategy going into this match with John Roden? You know, I, I got told that I was facing the juggernaut, John Roden. And we all know that there is no such thing as a juggernaut because those are mystical creatures, whatever. But I do know that they do come on Modern Warfare 2. So that's exactly what I did. I cracked open a nice bush latte, sipped that up, and I beat every single one of those juggernauts on that game. But for some reason, somehow it didn't, didn't translate over there. But I think it was because those, those things are mysterious, are mysterious creatures, and I just got caught there. But it's all right. It's okay, you know. Any final thoughts? Yeah, there is. Anybody else in the locker room, I'm going to make you respect the perm and fear the mullet. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com.